We now move to our panel as we're joined here in studio by our own Christina Parts Nevelos, also from Moody's, Chief Economist John Lonsky, and with us today as well, Brandywine Global Portfolio Manager Jack McIntyre. All right, I want to get to all sorts of topics uh, with all three of you, including Tesla, which is a great story today to discuss in a lot of different ways. But John Lonsky, why don't you react to Kevin Hassett right off the bat about economic growth and the uh, sustainability of the boom we're in. What do you think? He's right. Uh, growth in the third quarter is going to be above uh, 3%, may not quite make it to 4%, but I think we're going to continue to see jobs creation proceed at a healthy pace, and that's mm -hmm. going to lend important support to consumer spending, telling me going forward we're more likely to get upside surprises with retail sales and consumer spending as opposed to the opposite. In the midst of all this, Christina, that Tesla stock price is really getting hammered today. It's now down, as you see on your screen there, by 9%. Uh, percent. It was a remarkable interview that Elon Musk gave to the uh, the New York Times. And later in the show, we're going to get into some of the details and the emotion of the interview and all this kind of thing uh, that Elon Musk, uh, you know, talked about from the ambient to you know, everything back and forth. <laughs> but to me, the most important thing financially is that that tweet that he put out saying that the funding was secured to take the company private at four hundred twenty dollars. Well, you know what? It turns out it wasn't very secure at all. What'd you make of that? No, it isn't. And why you're seeing the stock down today is because there's reports that they could be meeting with the SEC as early as next week. So that's the reason why we're seeing a big drop today. But overall, he has said in on Monday, he put a blog post saying that they had support. Again, support does not equate to funding secured. No. And nobody has come forward. If anything, one of the two biggest stakeholders, T. Rowe and now Fidelity, they both dropped their shares of Tesla. They're incre uh, decreasing their portion right now which is not a good sign for no. Elon Musk when he needs confidence from his supporters. The acceleration now we're seeing in the stock sell-off jackets out by more than 9%. It's a $30 sell-off today. 305 is a long way uh, from 420. Do you see an end game from all this? If so, what is it? Well, so I, I look at the world from a 40,000-foot standpoint. <laughs> it's an interesting headline. Uh, the real economy is on solid footing. That's going to ultimately drive the equity market. Tesla is obviously unique to Tesla. Right. And it's a, uh, John? Well, you know, let's not forget, you know, for the year to date, uh, Tesla stock is down by, I think, by only roughly 2%. Uh, Ford is down 24%. GM and Fiat are down 12%. So the uh, equity market's uh, pricing of motor vehicle company related shares has not been exactly great. It's kind of crazy. And there's perhaps yeah. more downside. There perhaps is more downside. That's an interesting point, uh, Christina, because as much as we're focused, I think some people were saying, boy, I'm, I'm surprised it didn't sell off more given the headlines the last few days. And then today's New York Times story added to it. But maybe John's right. We've we've maybe only gotten to 305. What do you think? Oh, I think overall, I think that there's going to be a downside for a lot. I know we we're talking the bigger picture of the economy and all that. But uh, I do believe right now when you have a lot of companies that are holding debt, consumers holding debt, which is contributing to that retail sales growth, that's going to be a concern going forward. With mm -hmm. Tesla, like many other companies, I think it could potentially be hit in the let's say, medium term over the next little while, because he's going to have to go through a lot of litigations, lawsuits, costs, and that's going yep. to hurt the stock. There it is basically since the tweet, right, down 19, 20 percent. All right. Um, as you guys said, we are talking kind of bigger picture. We were with Kevin Hassett about where the economy is and some of these big issues uh, that surround that. So, Jack, let me go to you on, on I think what is an interesting point that the president brought up for discussion today, this idea that companies, and it kind of plays into the Tesla mm. uh, situation to some degree, if you believe Elon Musk's reason for wanting to take the company private in the mean in in the first place is that short termism mm -hmm. is something you hear from publicly traded CEOs all the time as being oh man I don't want to have to deal with this meeting my numbers every quarter giving guidance every quarter all that kind of thing so Jack the president suggests he says he got the idea from Indra Nui, the outgoing uh, CEO at Pepsi that maybe we should go to two times a year for reporting rather than four what do you think yeah, no, I agree. I, th I think I, certainly on the surface, it makes sense because anything that gets us away from very short term oriented and, and more on the long term investment. I mean, this country, we need a lot of investment in the private sector, public sector. Uh, so to the degree that that's going to happen, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, I think it would be a net positive. It's going to influence productivity and it's going to mean that inflation is going to remain 
tame and this business cycle is going to continue to grow on for, for years. A couple of well-known... So I agree. I think it's, it makes sense. A couple of well-known, not necessarily supporters of this specific idea, but of the idea, John, of getting rid of short-termism in the... I believe it was in June in the Wall Street Journal that both Jamie Dimon and, and Warren Buffett wrote a piece saying that we should do away with guidance on a quarterly basis. So it's kind of not exactly an endorsement of this, but it's that idea of let's not be focused on such short-term goals. Yeah. Your and, thoughts on this but, whole yeah, thing? Yeah, one of the big problems with quarterly reporting is that it means that the CEO CEO, CFO, and other top managers have to put in a lot of time, four times a year, uh, getting these reports together, coming up with these forecasts. And when they're doing this, putting these forecasts together, right. they're not taking care of the underlying business. Uh, they're losing the, their focus on growing the business over time. There is one other side, Christina, just as a final point here, and I brought this up to Kevin, is that, and from you know, having covered this for a long time, we all know you're, no one's forcing you necessarily to be a publicly traded company, but the investors do... They would argue some of them have the right to have more information, not less. So what do you make of that? that well, people, that a lot of people have said that. There you go. And there's the connection with Elon Musk that if, when you're a public company, you need to be held accountable for right. all of your financials. And yes, I do think that it would decrease volatility and really give you a better picture of the economy of your company. However, the flip side is you can hide things a little bit better when you're right. dealing with longer periods. So maybe uh, for tax purposes, earnings, it, it can get trickier than sure. to catch uh, mistakes. So all right, guys, uh, thanks to all three of you. Appreciate it.